Well, if you have a child that's a daydreamer and you worry, oh my gosh, they can't focus in school. What's going to happen? Listen, we've got a great book for you that's going to embrace that characteristic about them. Author Candace DeMaran has written the book, Dahlia Daydreamer. And, and Candace is here to talk about her book and, and how this could be a wonderful trait. Candace, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. You know, when we talk about daydreaming as a parent, that could be a point of being really concerned. But this book is saying, look, embrace it. This is a beautiful aspect of, of what your child has. Why do you think that this could be such an encouraging um, aspect for them? Um, I think because like as a child of growing up, my teacher would always tell my mom, she's daydreaming in class. She's not paying attention. She's not focused, Yeah. but I was doing fine with the curriculum. I just could, but so even though I would go off to la la land sometimes and not be paying attention, like that was okay. That was part of being a kid. Right. And, right. And, and and that's a great thing. When you wrote this book, I mean, you kind of want to say, hey, this isn't necessarily negative. This is this is the beauty of imagination. And you're yeah. you're you're embracing that. Exactly. It's a sweet thing. It's a, it's positive. It's good for kids to daydream. Is that what made you decide to be a children's author? I feel like I wanted to. I was reading a lot of books to my kids and I thought, I feel like I could do something like this. Like I want to read them something that's inspired by me, something that I did. And then I did it and I wrote the book just for them. And then I thought, well, maybe I should share this with everyone. Maybe this would benefit other people. And I don't know. I started to feel like maybe this is worth something. And I love the fact that it's something that's going to speak to a lot of, a lot of parents and say, oh, you know what? Maybe this isn't just a negative. Maybe there's something great that can be, um, you know, bloom out of this. Because before we started recording, you talked about how you'd look out the window and you'd see a, a bird and it just became this movie for you. Yeah, you know? it did. A lot of things became a movie for me. I, it just plays out that way in my mind. But I feel like I feel like that's part of being a kid. And, and I think it just creates such a beautiful thing in your mind. I, I also think that it's something that maybe technology could kind of squash in some ways. So this, you know, having a book like this with the beautiful pictures and the encouragement just kind of helps to birth it and keep yeah. it growing. And you don't need an iPad in front of you to be entertained. You should be able to just sit there and look outside and entertain yourself with the beauty of the world. Mm, that is such a great point. How long did it take you to write this book? It actually just took me a couple of hours. I decided I'm going to write this book for my kids, have it printed out so I can read something to them. And as soon as I got started, I just got carried away. Wow. Did you read a lot growing up? I did. I read a lot growing up. A lot of Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. Those imaginary worlds. Imagine that. I love, I love imaginary worlds. Oh, the places you'll go. Like, I kid, you'll move mountains. I love that line. Do you read to your children? I do. And I've been reading to them since they were in my belly. Really? Yeah. They can hear your voice. That's yeah. important. Do you create characters? Have you created characters with and for them? Um, Like when we're playing around... Like fantasy and stuff. Yes, we yeah. do a lot of make believe. I like encourage it, and I start it so they can learn how to do it. Because I think it's, I think it's really neat. Yeah, you sound like a child from honestly, like the eighties. I mean, before there was a lot of technology, and, and it's just, that's just such a beautiful time. Um, I, I fear a little bit to be honest with you about what's happening online. There's a lot of great stuff that happens online, but that imagination and going out and playing outside and, and you um, really take the beauty of nature. Agreed. And, I did a yeah. lot of playing outside. Like, I feel like I grew up in like Mr. Rogers, like perfect neighborhood where you could just ride your bike and mm -hmm. go for a walk or walk to the pond. And like, you, there was always something to do as a kid and it was always with nature involved and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. 
You said it almost seemed like everything could come alive. It does. Like I can just look up at the sky and look at the clouds and it just like becomes a movie or like sometimes I'll have characters in my head and it becomes like a show. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, maybe I'm supposed to be directing like a musical or something. <laughs> right. Do you have the book with you by any chance? I sure do. I have Could like you open it up? Would you mind showing us? Oh, look at the colors. I love the colors. And I was so happy that I got to dedicate a page to my daughters. And they're so proud of me for making this book. That's wonderful. How did you come up with the illustrations? Oh, that is amazing. Yep, that's Dahlia. <laughs> oh, how, how did you come up with the illustrations? Who so did them? I actually found Rebecca Harris was online in this website called Storybird, where young artists like put up their work and new um, writers can like pick up their illustrations if they like them. So she had a bunch of illustrations and I thought, that's so perfect for my book. Like that would go perfectly. You just felt that connection. Like that was Dahlia. That was Dahlia. What do your kids think about your book? Oh, they love it. They're so proud of me and they tell everyone about it and like where they can get it. And like, <laughs> my mommy's new book. Do you see other books coming in your future? I do. I feel like, so I had this little three pound chihuahua for a long time. She was like my first child, my first pride and joy. And she, this little chihuahua had like nine lives. And she had <laughs> like the most incredible journeys and adventures. And I feel like I want to share that with kids. You know, I love, Candace the way that you take things that have happened in your personal life. You're not looking at other people's lives. You're taking from your own rich experiences and you're sharing those. And really, that's an encouragement for other writers. I mean, I almost feel like that would be your your word to them is take from your own life and see the stories and write about it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. What was the hardest part? What was the biggest learning curve for you in writing the book? Um, I feel like the hard part for me was to put it out there because I always have, I think I have like this fear of success and I like to do things just for me, not because of anything else, just because yeah. it pleases me. So I was worried to share it and like not, not everybody love it the way I do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's just going to be an amazing success. Love the the concept behind it. It's very unique. And um, I know that you're represented by Writers Republic. Where is the book available? So it's available on writersrepublic.com and Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Yep, you can get it at all those places. And maybe next time we'll be talking, we'll be talking about your next book about the little dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> adventures something i love that well love thank you so much for joining us have a great day and thanks again thanks so much bye thank you